ask you to think of one of five cards. One of these. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. You got one? Say it to yourself over and over again in your mind. Look at me. Shout it at me in your mind. I will remove it. Got it. It's gone. Leaving the other four. Your card is gone, hasn't it? It's a miracle. How is it possible? Well, it's a trick. You see, at the beginning, I showed you this set of five and asked you to think of one of these, which I then swapped for this set, which is why your card is missing. But that's the only trick you're going to see in the next hour. There are no stooges and no actors in this show. All the reactions are real, and everything you'll see is exactly what you would have seen had you been there with me. These are not magic tricks. This is mind control. I wanted to begin with people who I knew would be tough and skeptical, so I visited a group of young offenders in prison. Nikki, Darren, I'm going to try and get a word from your mind. All right? Have you got a word in your mind? Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, first of all, there's no way anybody here. There is no way anybody could know the word you have in your mind at the moment. But it's possible that I could have influenced you in some way to think of that word. So I want you to change your mind a few times and keep changing your mind until you settle on one. Tell me when you're done. Yeah. All right? And that's the word we're going to go with now. So you look at me and you think of that word. Can you picture it? Is there a picture you can make? Uh, imagine that picture between us and make it really, like, as if you had TV controls and you can make it bright and vivid and colourful. That's important. Look at me. Don't look away. Just look at me and do that. Visualise the picture. I'm going to write down what I think you're thinking of, all right? I just want to get this close. Just close to what you're thinking of. What was the word you had in mind? Battle. 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 Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. Can I use you for this? Come sit up here, family. Can't remember your name. Tell me your name again. Chris. Great look. Put your eyes closed and just relax and sink right the way down. And as you relax and listen to my voice, I'm going to take your hand and with your eyes closed, I'm going to place your hand there. But I won't tell you to put it down any more quickly than you just keep on sinking and relaxing right the way down and right the way deep as I take your hand now and stick it right there to your leg and feel it sticking and pressing right the way into your knee. I'm not hypnotizing you, what I'm doing is placing you into a state here of heightened synchronicity. Because your eyes are closed you can't see me but you will feel this. I'm going to release this pressure here and when I do I want you to let the hand rise up in the air all by itself. I'm going to make a gesture, an up gesture that you'll all be able to see but he won't because his eyes are closed. When you feel the pressure release let your hand rise through the air. Just let it happen. Just relax and take your time. Ready? <laughs> keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed for now. And back down again. <laughs> Can I get you just to come and stand right behind him? Come stand behind him. Look at the back of his head and point your finger there. All right? Come back a bit so we can't feel you. Now stare at the back of his head. Now you wait for the moment and you choose when to do this. And then you make a very clear movement like that with your hand. All right? But you wait as long as you like before you do it. Just believe that you can do it. Believe you can make his hand move. Take your time and choose the moment. I just felt relaxed and I just felt my arm going up there. Well, how did you know when to lift that hand? What pressure thing did you feel? I just went up there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I met with a senior psychologist to discuss the reported synchronicity between identical twins. The strongest claims about psychic ability come from twins. And this comes from anecdotal evidence where one twin will say, you know, I was thinking of my twin, the phone rings, I pick it up, it's them on the end of the phone. And so often they believe there's a kind of psychic bond between them. And you've arranged for some twins to join us here this afternoon. Can I ask you to verify for us that I haven't met any of these 
people before and nothing has been prearranged. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we've arranged the twins to uh, come along, take part in your experiment. Uh, you haven't spoken to them before and there's been no collusion. Okay, guys, can I move you through here? Can I put you on that yep. side of the partition and you there so that you can't see each other, correct? Yep. yep. Fantastic. All right, this is an experiment I want to do to amplify any synchronicity already between you. All right, very simple. I'm going to clap my hands at this kind of rate. As I do that, with each clap, you must raise a limb. Right arm, left arm, left leg, or right leg, doesn't matter. One on each clap. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Ready? I'm attempting to create a psychological environment where even without being able to see each other, they begin to replicate each other's actions almost perfectly. You're doing two at a time and that's throwing you, that's throwing you. Relax. We do it again. Ready? Here we go. Fantastic. Kerry, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes for me, and as you do that, to become very aware of any sensations that you can feel, all right? That's right. Close your eyes. Kerry, did you feel anything? around my head and neck area. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Any taps? Let's do it again. In Ready? the middle of the shoulders. How many taps? Three. Three taps. Okay, that's interesting. Let me try something else. Open your eyes to me, Joe. Just have to excuse me here. Oh. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> right. What okay, you can that? open your eyes. Thank you. <laughs> what was that like? I just felt like I got, I got smacked on the bottom. I'm sorry, that was me. Thank you so much. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Some athletes use the mind to try and improve stamina and strength. Can I use my mind to take it away? Let's um, use this guy here. Yes, Williams, come forward. Come in. Williams, yeah? No, I want to take you up here into the ring, all right? We're going to go try something up here. Come with me. OK. Come stand in the middle for me, Williams. Out there, face me. And tell me, we haven't met before, I haven't hypnotised you, we haven't done this stuff like that. No. OK, all right. And you're a fit guy, you're obviously a strong guy. Let me try this with you. Um, Jasmine, can I use you? Can you come up here, please? Come stand opposite Williams, face him. What I need you to do is to lift Jasmine, all right? Just lift her straight up, if you can do that. Again? Perfect. That's great. Now look at me. Look at me. When I say the word now, you try and lift her. Wait. Get ready. OK, now. And. I tried to lift her up, and the first time it worked, but the second time it's like he had this doing this thing behind me, man. I couldn't lift her up. Yeah. When I say the word now, you will not be able to lift her. Excellent. Get ready. That's it. Now. I'm saying you weekly. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Next time. Big fella. Fantastic. What's your name? Paul. Paul. Stand there. Hands on knees, lift us straight up. Straight up, straight. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> now look at me. Shh. When I. Say now, you will not be able to lift her. Wait. Go. Wait. Okay. Now. <coughs> Again. Wait. Again. 
Look at me. Okay, look at me. <laughs> You're a big <laughs> fucker, we're gonna come back to you later. <laughs> Suki, isn't it? Is that right? Hello. Hi. I need you to have in your mind um, a number. Right? Any number you like between, we'll say, one and a thousand. Oh, okay. Very important, no one here knows what it is. So draw it, or write it there, and then hold it like that so no one can see. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Fantastic. Nice Thanks. and clearly. Thank you. Now, I'm hoping that you two share a lot of interests and tastes and things like that. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, because I want to talk to you about that in a minute. Have you done that, Suki? Yeah, I have, yeah. Are you holding it up so no one can see it? Yeah, I have. Fantastic. Excellent. Just put your feet flat on the floor for me. Good to meet you. I'm Derek. Look at your hands. Let your eyes closed. That's right. And just start to relax and sink right the way down and right the way deep. That's perfect. Because I place you in a very heightened state of synchronicity with your sister. I'm not hypnotizing you. I'm placing you in a heightened state of synchronicity. And I want you to remain hearing and aware of everything that I'm doing. I want you to think about some interest that you share with your sister. As you do that and with your eyes still closed, I'm going to give you a pad which I'd like you to hold firmly there and keep it still. Keep it still. I'm also going to give you in this hand a pen. Mind your fingers on the nib and place that there. Keep the pad upright and place that on the paper. Fantastic. Now, Bao, I'm going to ask you some questions about interest and things that you share. I want you to answer my questions fully, but at the same time, keep the pen moving on the paper. So start it moving now. Just start it moving around, all on its own. Tell me something you should have in common with your sister, an interest. Clothes. Pardon? Clothes. 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 Okay, what sort of clothes do you tend to both go out and buy? Same shoes. Mm-hmm. What else other than clothes? Tops. Tops. <laughs> it's mainly clothes, though. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fantastic. Keep your eyes closed for a minute. I'm just going to take the pen back off you for a second. I'm going to turn this round so that we can see what that says. Hold that for me there, that's perfect, all right? Now, I would say that, that says, let show them at home. All right. That's what I think. I want you to hold that again for me like that, that's perfect. All right. Now, very slowly, just allow your eyes to open and come back to me, three, two, one, you okay? Yeah. All right. Stay there for a second. All right. You've got a number there. Yeah. Let's have a look. Let's see how close it is. Let's see how close. What have you got? 86. That's exactly the same. That is exactly the same. Thank you so much. That is perfect. I had no number in my mind at all. I felt a bit, like, heavy-headed and just felt a bit dizzy, but apart from that, it was okay. It felt quite normal, but in a very, very deep sleep. Out from a thousand, how could she come up the same number as me? Yeah. It's freaky. <laughs> Again, all right. I haven't hypnotised you before. We haven't set anything up. Look at me. When I say now, you will not be able to lift her. Look at me. Excellent. Get ready. Wait. Wait. Okay, now. Now. <laughs> I don't know. I just tried to lift her trap, put all my strength into it, and she wasn't moving. I was extremely surprised. It's bad. in the middle of the night, in the middle of the night, and you see somebody see. Woken up in the middle of the night, you woken up in the middle of the night, mind starts to sleep. We've brought you out, we've brought you out. Somebody just staring at you, and staring at you, and staring at you. But you blink, and then it's just a dressing gown thrown over a door, you know what I mean? Yeah. And what happens at that moment is that your mind takes an innocent, ordinary, everyday object and turns it into the subject of a hallucination. This is what I want to do with you. Do you like horror films? No. Yes, I'm. No. <laughs> They scare me. So what you hate about them is what we love about them, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now I want to do something with you too. Okay. It's this thing that I do when I perform, when I give people their own little personal horror trip in their mind. If you don't want to do this, that's fine. But if you say yes, there is no going back. You cannot change your mind. Do you want to do this? Yes. 
Let me see what you see. Let me see what you see. Let me feel what you feel. Let me feel what you feel. Let me in. Keep looking at me. Keep looking at me. Keep your eyes on me. Keep looking at me. And if at any point you need to open your eyes, you look straight back at me. But for now, just close your eyes. I want you to imagine around you now a wall, a brick wall, an old brick wall. And on the other side of that wall, you put all your deepest, darkest fears. With my voice right there in the center of your head and floating all the way around you, you know what those fears are. And you place those on the other side of the wall and see them in your mind, clawing, scraping at the wall, trying to get in. Visualize them, see them. Smell them, hear them, feel them, fear them on the other side of the wall, pushing at the wall, trying to get in. And the wall is an old wall, it's an old brick wall and it's starting to crumble and the bricks are old bricks and I'm going to reach forward and I'm going to take one of those bricks and I'm going to remove it. Wait. Fuck. Open your eyes, look at me. You're safe. You're safe. You touched me. Okay. It's just in your mind. Do you want to carry on? Yes. Close your eyes again, and you rebuild the wall and you feel safe for a while until something happens that makes us once again doubt the solidity of our defenses. Pitch them again, build it up again on the other side of the wall, those fears pushing, struggling, straining to get in, pushing at the wall, feel them, feel them, fear them, smell them, sense them, imagine them, I'm going to reach forward, I'll take another brick out. I'll reach forward, I'll take one more out, wait for it, wait for it, you'll feel it. Open your eyes, do you feel something? Yes. You feel it again? Yes, harder. Okay. Now look at me. Just close your eyes again now, it's okay. And rebuild the wall completely and safely. For the last time, just rebuild it and feel safe. And put them back on the other side of the wall where they belong and let them dissolve and strengthen the wall. Make it safe, make it really safe, properly safe. Open your eyes. You okay? Yes. It was scary, wasn't it? Yes. It's just in your mind. You all right now? Yes. Can you go and warm up and make you some tea? Okay. Thank you. That would be scary. <laughs> he touched the back of my head. He touched the back of my head then. But he was there. I'm so glad that I did it because for me that was a really big thing because I'm so scared of the dark and it was confronting one of my fears and if that's what you can do with your own mind then that's so bizarre. It's wicked. I began my career as a magician but I left behind the props and the sleight of hand to work with the psychological techniques that are the real stuff of magic and here's why I was banned from casinos. The seven just came into my head, number seven. And then he said, red or black? And I said, black. And then he said, well, what suit? And I said, spades. And it was a seven spades. Unbelievable. <laughs> Tom, excellent. Can I take your cards? Is this a complete deck? It is, yes. Excellent. So who's the best player out of all of you? Um, I'd say Tom, yeah. yes. Tommy, you're the best. Well, you yeah. cheat more than anybody else. You cheat? Else. That's disgusting. <laughs> right, I'm going to face the other way while I do this. What I want you each to do is to pick a card out, all right? Take them right under the table so I can't see a thing, not even the backs of the cards. OK? Go. Yes? Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Have a look at them so you can remember what they are. That's important. Have a look at your cards. But keep them under the table so I can't see a thing. All right. Here's what's going to happen. You're aware of those telltale signs that are given off when you're playing a game of poker that let you know whether someone's bluffing or whether they've got a good hand or a bad hand, yeah? Yes. You're all going to give away what your cards are, all right? The more you try not to, the more you will. What I want you to do, one at a time, is to count through the values, ace, two, three, four, like that. We'll do the same with the suits. I'll start with you. Just count right the way through the values of the cards, ace to ten, ace, two, three, four, go. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. Interesting point. I purposely said, <clears throat> count right the way through, ace to ten. He didn't. He adds jack, queen, king. It tells me he must have picked a picture card. Does that make sense? Otherwise, you'd have stopped there, all right? Now, I don't know which one, mm -hmm. all right? I don't know if it's a jack or a queen. Queen, thank you. Excellent. <laughs> nice big nod. <laughs> um, <laughs> queen, right? Think of the colour of the card, all right? Imagine a, a big screen, like a cinema screen painted in that colour. Can you do that? Yeah. Make it so bright and vivid and see it in your mind. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, he keeps on nodding while I say bright and vivid. Can't be black. He'd have had to think about it for a minute. So I'm going to say it's a red queen, 
I don't know which one. So just look me in the eye and tell me the two red suits in a deck of cards. Diamonds and hearts. Right. And there was a bit of a flicker. There was a pause before diamonds. So you couldn't have already had diamonds in mind. And you're more likely to put it at the end anyway and say it's second. So I'm going to say Queen of Hearts. Am I right? You're yeah, right. <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Let's do this with you now. Count right the way through. Ace to king. Ace, two, three, four, three, five. Three, yes. Five. <laughs> you're right. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me, the, tell me the four suits. Tell me what they are. Spades, mm -hmm. clubs, diamonds and hearts. All right, okay. It wasn't spades because you were thinking about it. Clubs, everyone always says last because it's the funny one that people can never remember or something. The fact that you got it in there second, I'm saying clubs, three of clubs. What'd you got? Yeah, William. <laughs> <laughs> Tom. Yes. 20 years experience. Let's try this. Just count right the way through. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, Actually, seven, tell you what, eight. let's do this differently, because you've been playing with this guy for a while. Wouldn't it be great if you could just look at him and tell the card he had? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> let's try this. Come, come on here. Come and sit here. <laughs> you sit here so you can see what I see and you can hear what I hear as we do this. Right. All right? You concentrate on your card. He's giving you signals all the time that you're probably not even aware of. Just name a number. Not three, because we've had that, but name a number between one and ten. Seven. Seven. Okay, and you've got red cards and black cards. If you get rid of some, what's left? Black card. Black cards. And name a black suit. Spades. Spades. So what's that? Seven of spades? Seven of spades. That's just by looking at him. See how close you are? You haven't done this before, have you? No. How close did you get? Exact. <laughs> Seven of spades. <laughs> You're a miracle. Fantastic. How did you do that? No idea. Oh. He just said, pick any number in the pack. And I just said seven. So there was no influence there. When he said red or black, I just said black, and then, then he went on to the two suits, and I just picked the spades. And it was just, it amazed me as much, <laughs> I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> People are always saying, can you use your skills to get extraordinarily beautiful women into bed? Well, yes. Yes, I can. Michelle? Alex. Alex, good to meet you. Philippa. Philippa. Hello. Can I, can I just say, because we've been, we've been looking at a lot of very beautiful women tonight with the models and everything, but can I just say, and I mean this, and if this sounds cheesy, I apologise, but I just think you three are, are really lovely. You are so <laughs> cheesy. No, 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 this, isn't, no, this isn't cheesy. No, this isn't cheesy, this isn't cheesy, because there's a lot of beautiful people out there, but you've just got like a glow or a presence or something about you. Okay, that is a really cheesy chat. Would, <laughs> would, that, would that work for you for even an instant? Not in that. No, no, not in All right, can I... Would it work for you? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I ask each one of you, right? Mm -hmm. Do this absolutely seriously for me. Can you think in your minds of a quality that, that you would want from a guy? All yes. right? Mm -hmm. Just focus on something. And Philippa, if you would in particular mm -hmm. think of... Um, a line, uh, like a chat-up line, maybe one that's worked for you in the past, mm -hmm. or one that would might work for you, that if some, some guy came up and said this, you'd be like, yeah, okay, I'll let this guy buy me a drink, or yeah, you know, I'll crawl around at all falls and butt like a dog, if that's what you really <laughs> want. It doesn't take a lot. No. Okay. Will you, will you think of something for yes. me? Yes. So you've got a line. Mm -hmm. is, it, is this something that's worked for you in the past? Is it something that... It's something I was very impressed with. All right, okay, don't give me any more clues than that. And, um, mm -hmm. and you two, uh, I'll come back to that. Michelle, isn't it? Yes. Look at me. Now this quality, just imagine I'm some guy, this is, this is how I do it in real life. Imagine I'm walking up to you in a party. Have me say in your mind, just hear me say the thing you'd want me to say or, or to pick up on the thing. It's, and if I get this right, this is like the most difficult thing that I do, so let me know that I'm right. This is astrology, isn't it, with you? Yes. Yeah, you're quite big on that. That's quite a big major part of what you do. Yes. And I think something that would really is that was that what you were thinking of? Yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> and um, <laughs> no, it, it would literally be that I'm the same star sign that would that would do it. Oh my. Is that is that what you had in mind? Yes. Be absolutely honest. That's what you had in mind. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yours, I think, is 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 not that because you'd have reacted if I was saying that. I think it's. Um, I think it's 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 an it's a nice it's a friendly thing, but it's it's like sense of sense of humour would be really important. <laughs> too. Is that your thing? Yeah. Yeah. This is this is, oh, this is this is this is great. Okay, now look at me. Look at me. Now hear me. Oh my God, that's hear brilliant. me say. Hear me say the line. 
And also, genuinely, eyes are very important to you, aren't they? Because you're giving me a lot back now, yeah? Okay. Did you kind of have that in mind yeah, yeah, as well, yeah, that you're yeah, thinking yeah. of eyes yeah, as well? Yeah. All right, now hear me say the line. Hear me say the line. Um, hear me say the line. Okay, this is something that a guy said to you quite a while back. It's not, it's not going to be It's not going to be about your appearance. It's not going to be anything like that because you're very cynical about that. It is. My friends say I'd be really good for you. Oh. Oh. Is that it? Is that it? Oh. Yeah. Does that work? <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh but it kind of... Um, it didn't I work at the time, but it, but it melted really you good. It melted you for a minute. I thought I was impressed by it. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. Thank you. We'll have a drink later on. Okay, now here, every look, every gesture is designed to influence. And you're all psychology students, right? Yeah. Does that mean that when you're talking to people that they kind of think you're constantly trying to analyse them? Do you get that? They think that all the time. It's great. <laughs> I'm going to play this game with you, right? This is my favourite game. Okay. Simple game, two envelopes, a five pound note. I'm going to okay. seal this one of the envelopes. The three of you have to look the other way while I do this. Right the other way, literally face that way. Go. Okay. Go. Okay, turn back and look. Very simple, Alex. If you touch one with the money, you can keep it. If you miss it and go for the wrong one, I'm afraid you can't. All right, go, touch one. Now, see what I did there? I'm saying if you touch the one with the money in it, and I move this one, I'm consciously signaling to you that that's the one with the money in, which of course isn't, it's the one <laughs> over here. I also brought that one towards you as your finger came in. Get the idea? Uh -huh. This is great. We'll play with the tenor. You missed on the fiver. <laughs> sure. Perfect. All right. Ten pounds. I'll give them a mix under the table so you can't see. Free choice. Just put your finger on any one you like. It's a free choice. The one you choose is the one you have. That one. Now, can you see what I'm doing? Can you see this with my hands? And you're exactly. Which of course it isn't. It was in the other one. Did you get the idea? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. You missed on the 10 too. We'll play with 20. All right? 20 pounds. <laughs> it's great. Again, you mix them. Okay. I'll do that. Now just think, all right? Am I trying to make you pick that one because I put the money over here by doing that? Or is it a kind of bluff and actually I know you'd never go for that one and I have in fact put the money there? Or is it a double bluff and I know that you'd be able to second guess that one that you would go for that one in fact I put the money over here after all? So is it a bluff or is it a double bluff? Or is it a, or is it a bluff? triple bluff? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Choose. What do you think? Think. That one. <laughs> you go for that one? Yep. Sure? Yep. Actually, it was a complete bluff because I forgot which one it was. <laughs> okay, that was luck on my part. It was in the other one. Very good, though. 50 quid. Hey, you play with me. You play with me. All right? Tell you what, I'll look the other way. Get another envelope. Keep your finger on this one because you want to keep track of where it is. All right? Keep your okay. finger on that one. I'll look the other way. Mix them around. When you're done, lift your finger off so you know the one that it's in. Okay, I'm going to look over here. Okay. Mix them around. Okay. Done? Done. All right, I'm going to ask you, is it here, is it here, is it here? You have to say yes to each one, all right? Yep. Is it in this one? Yes. Is it in this one? Yes. Is it in this one? Yes. No, it's not. <laughs> is it in this one? Yes. OK. <laughs> it was. <laughs> You're very good there. You're very good. <laughs> That's right, let's do this with, um, we'll do this with 50, all right? 50 pounds. Mix them up. Okay. I tell you what, I'll put the rest of the money on it as well. Alright, so it's 50 plus 20, 70, <laughs> 80, 85. And that, um, Andy, have you got that? You've, where that watch? Let me take that off here. But Andy's watch as well, alright? So that, that's 85 quid and Andy's watch for the last envelope. And I'll tell you, because I feel bad because you keep losing. Turn this in this one. I trust you. If you, don't, well, if you don't trust me, Alex, it's up to you. I can't I remember trust that. I'm you. telling it's you it's one. in that one. I trust you. It's right. in that one. But I will also give you five seconds to change your mind so you know this was completely <laughs> fair and you don't feel manipulated in any way. Right? 
But there's the money if you win. You've got five seconds. Does that feel right? That feels then right. Then absolutely stick with it and do not change your mind if that feels right. Okay. Five seconds to change your mind there if you want. Don't five? Change your mind. No, don't. <laughs> Four. Just stick with it. Yeah. Stick with it, I'm telling you. Three. Trust me. <laughs> Two. One. Stick with it. Zero. I can't believe you believe me. <laughs> I was in the other one. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. I think he was predicting the way I was going to behave before I knew I was going to behave like that. I want you to think of uh, something personal, something I couldn't know about, a, a memory, a, a childhood memory. Whatever pictures you're making in your mind, expand those pictures, make them bigger and brighter, intensify them. Show me in your mind what it is you're thinking of. Get right back into it. What you're doing is you're taking the emotions connected with these images and bringing them right to the surface. That's where I need them, where I can read them. Okay, open your eyes to me. That's great. Okay, now stand opposite me and face me. You see, I do this for people sometimes and they think right back to when they were very young, like sort of two or three with other people. They think back to when they're a little older. And you're telling me it's a little older, so it's not when you're two or three. I'm going to guess this is maybe around 10, 11, something like that. Is that right? Excellent. All right, now just in your mind, I want you to tell me, not out loud, just in your mind, tell me what it is you're thinking of. And you? You just put your hands by your side. Okay, look at me. Yours, I think, is something essentially, it's a pleasant thing, yeah? Yours is a bit more, something went wrong. All right, let me start with you then. All right. Sometimes people think about things that are connected with a friend, sometimes it's family. It's family with you, isn't it? Yeah. All right, okay. This is something that's happened with your family, and it's a memory from home. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting a front room in this picture, and you... You're outside, yeah? It's not inside, you're outside, and something happens, it's like an accident or, a, or an injury or something, that you're with somebody else, is that right? Yeah. And you're messing around. This isn't at home, this is like out, and it's not far from where you live, yeah? yeah? Okay. Okay. You're with somebody else who I think is older than you, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. This is, it's like Christmas or it's a birthday or something like that, true? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yours isn't, you're just playing, you're just playing and you're up to something and something and it's fun and then something goes wrong and I can't think what it is. Look me right in the eyes and with your mind tell me what it is you're thinking of. Listen, is it okay if I take your cap off? Yeah. All right, hold that, hold that. Just tell me with your mind, tell me with your mind what it is. Right, you're with somebody else, you're out and you're playing and you've fallen and you've fallen and you've hurt yourself. There's something else, you've fallen out of something, is that right? <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's kind of a wood sort of image, it's foresty, so I'm guessing you've fallen out of a tree or something like that and hurt yourself and it's kind of here and down the side of your body. Is that right? Yeah. Excellent. Stand there for a second. Let me just finish with you here now. Just tell me in your mind. Tell me what to keep your eyes open, otherwise I can't do it. Keep your eyes open. Look at me. Tell me what it is. Tell me what it is. Just in your mind. Tell me. It's an object. It's sort of a bluey coloured object. Is that right? It's something. It's, it's a present, isn't it? This is just a memory of a present. But this is like the first present you've had, or it's like a best present that you had when you were really young. And it's a pair of bluey, kind of not quite this colour, but sort of bluey, uh, silvery... It's, it's, it's clothes. It's at the top, or... Uh, it's some clothing you've got, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Just, you just... A pair of, a pair of trousers. That's a, yeah, kind of a yeah. bit of a guess, but is that right? Yeah. yeah. I'll stop there. I won't get any more with that one. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> my man's clever. He must have got inside our heads. Or That's something. what I'm saying. He just fought at the fort straight inside my head. That's exactly what I was thinking. I fell out of a tree, you know. My man just guessed it. Just like that. It's mad. I perform psychological effects to try and make people more aware of the way we influence and manipulate each other. And sometimes the impact that is created causes people to challenge the way they see the world. And this next experiment is all about an awareness of patterns of behaviour. Just a game of chance, really. <laughs> 50 pounds, I'll put it under one of the books. Then you lift one and look the other way, all right? Okay. Look the other way. Okay, turn back. Lift one up. Ah. It's that one. Okay. <laughs> Again? Again. Look the other way. Okay. Okay. Lift one up. <laughs> no! It's that one. Every time, okay. Again? Look the other way. Okay. Put back. Lift one up. No! Oh, oh, that one. <laughs> one more time, one more time. Okay. Put the other way. Put back. 
Which one? Can I lift two of them up? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that one. 50-50 <laughs> of getting the money. And I looked which ones you put forward. I looked which ones, you know, you sort of centred on. And I still don't get it right. I even did three in a row. <laughs> the key's going to swap sooner or later. And he didn't swap. Let me see what you see. Let me see what you Let see. Let me feel what you feel. Let, Let me feel in. what you feel. Let me in. in. Keep looking. Keep at looking me. at me. Keep looking at me. Keep looking at me. Keep looking at me. If at any point you need to open your eyes, you look straight back at me. But for now, just close your eyes. What I want you to imagine for me now is a wall around you, right the way around you. Did you hear my voice right there in the center of your head and floating all the way around you? You place your deepest, darkest fears on the other side of the wall. You know what those fears are. And you see them. And you hear them. And you feel them on the other side of that wall, clawing, scraping, trying to get in. Feel them coming forward and the wall is an old wall. It's a brick wall and it's crumbling and I'm going to reach forward and I'm going to take hold of one of those bricks and I'm going to pull it out. Not yet, but you'll feel it. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> All right, open your eyes, look at me, open your eyes, look at me, be safe. Be safe, look at me. Now close your eyes again. Close them. And rebuild the wall. And for a moment you feel safe. Until something happens that makes us once again doubt the solidity of our defenses. Pitch them again. Build it up again. The pressure as they try to get in. Feel them pushing, feel them pushing against the wall once more. I'm going to reach forward, I'm going to take a brick. Wait for it, you'll feel it. Wait. Wait. <laughs> yeah, open your eyes, open your eyes. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Close your eyes one more time and rebuild the wall. Be safe. Be safe. Rebuild the wall. I could see this one brick and it was almost melting away as if, as if that was it, that they were just going to come and get me. I'm going to play this with you, all right? Because okay, I think probably through watching the three of you had to sing, probably your singles are easiest to read, so let's do this with you, all right? All right. Take your money. We'll play 20 quid around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's enough for two hands of poker. If you shuffle those up, I'm going to influence you to pick the losing hand each time. Are you aware of your own signals when you play a game of poker? No. Are you aware of what you might have been doing as I've been talking to you now? No. Fantastic. Let's play. <laughs> shuffle them up. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. This is have short sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> 20 quid each for the first one. I'll take two cards, I'll see what they are. I will take the card you discard each time. Touch one. This one. Okay. So you're building me a hand, one at a time. Touch one again. Touch this one you want me to have. Sure. Okay. You're alternating, do you notice that? Mm-hmm. Which means you... <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> now what you're going to do? That one. Now you're still alternating. You're also telling me with your nose which one you're going to go for, so I can place them in the right, or you're going to go for this that one. one this time. That one. Have a look, see how you did. Put them on the table, let's have a look. What you got? You've got two kings. <laughs> Not right, what have I got? I've got a pair of sevens and a pair of aces. I win that round. Brilliant. That's my money. Fantastic. <laughs> but we'll play again. This time, um, I'm going to rearrange these cards into an order that I think I can sort of influence you with, kind of order that I predict your behaviour with. I'm going to put that there, that there. Okay, I'm done. 20 pounds on this round again. Fantastic, thank you. Do you want that one or do you want me to have it? No, I'll have that one. You'll have that one, but this one? Yeah, you me, have that you? one. Sure? This one? I'll have this one, yeah. That one? You'll have that one. This one? That one. This one? Oh, you, you really want one. one more? You really want more? Are you sure? Yeah. That one? Yeah. That leaves me with those two. Have a look, see how you did. I believe you might have lost that round. Face up. Fairly <laughs> <laughs> king for you. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly as right, I no planned. <laughs> uh, two aces, two sevens. It's really fantastic. That's my... <laughs> Mix them up, Tom. Last round. Mix them up. <sighs> That's 
another 20. We need, them, we need them in this one. We need so them in this one. Yes. Okay, face up. I'll let you see. You could win a game of poker on this. Do you want that one or drop me to have it? No, you can have that one. Okay, fantastic. What about that? Choose. Uh, no, you can have that one. You just, well, you're giving me two servants. What about that? I'll have that one. You'll have that one. Okay, and this? I'll have that one. I'll have that one as well. You only need one more. You only need one more. I don't need to feel pressurised here, so I'll let you see these oh, three. Look at those. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might as well. Uh, I'll go for this one. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. How did you do? How did you do? What you got? Even face up. You've got no excuse now for losing. You've given, you've given yourself three of three a kind, games. of course, mm -hmm. but you just gave me four. <laughs> that's excellent. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> really Thank good, you, gentlemen. I believe that's mine. Thank you for your show. As we go now into the business heart of London, ask yourselves, would our friend have given off different signals if I hadn't been using such a large amount of money? Hello. Can I just verify from the outset that this isn't a setup? we haven't arranged anything, you're not an actor, no, correct? No, in not fact, I remember. Well, you work in the stock market, is that right? I do, indeed. You all do, in fact. Yep. Yeah, investment banking. Which is an area, is an industry where huge sums of money are at stake every day. Yep, win the woolies, as they say. Fantastic. This game I play, normally I do it with two envelopes and there's money in one envelope, all right? Okay. Normally with 50 quid. We're doing this now with five envelopes and a much larger sum and the odds very much in your favour. Okay? Okay. What I want you to do, they're numbered. One, two, three, four, five. I need you to think of one of those envelopes, one of those numbers. Change your mind as many times as you like and then settle on one. Are you doing that for me now? Can you I do that? One, two, that. three, four, or five. Excellent. I'm only going to get one shot at this. Close your eyes for me and just count out loud. One, two, three, four, five. Just like that. Go. One, two, three, four, five. That was quick. Okay, open your eyes. That's fine. Don't change your mind. Stick with it. I'm going to seal something in one of these envelopes, the envelope that I think you're thinking of. I'll do it without you looking, all right? Then I will get you to push towards me the envelope that you are thinking of. I will keep whatever's in that envelope. You will keep whatever is in the remaining four. Does that make sense? Yep. And we're not doing it with 50 quid. This is a check for £10,000. This is a genuine check made out to... What's your full name? Matthew. Yes. Skilder. S C H I L D E R. Look at that. Okay. It's 10 grand, which okay. I'm going to gamble on being able to read your mind. Okay. You ready? Yep. I'll do this under the table. <laughs> Easy money, boys. Yeah, Easy yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What have we got? One, two, three, four. Five. When I say now, I want you to push the envelope towards me, the one you're thinking of. All right? Okay. When I say now. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm poised. Ready? Can I just take this opportunity to wish you the very best of luck? Okay. Somehow I don't think I'm going to have any luck here. <laughs> but let's <laughs> try anyway. <laughs> Do it now. Now. Envelope number two. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Open the others. Open the ones you kept for yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. This looks like daylight rubbery. <laughs> <laughs> you change my mind. <laughs> Have a look. Have a look at envelope number two, the one you gave me. There's something there. Honest. <laughs> <laughs> Ten grand, Matthew. Well done. Congratulations. I kept my number I thought of. I was trying to actually look towards number five, trying to give him some sort of icing down there, but it didn't work. <laughs> I used to sketch as a child, and now when I'm not performing, I paint bizarre portraits of people. And I'm creating one here for a final experiment, certainly the most difficult thing I've attempted. We went to a preview in an art gallery. It's very exciting to be here amongst a group of some of Britain's foremost young artists. I'm going to use this to generate a random member from the audience. Here's what I'm going to do. I will throw this over my shoulder. Whoever catches it 
You throw it again over your shoulder. Whoever catches it that time, you throw it one more time. This gets thrown three times. Somebody get ready to catch. Here we go. Throw it again. Throw it again. Somebody pick it up, throw it again. One more time into the audience. Can somebody catch it? You're our guy. What's your name? Steve. Steve, give me a beer. Hold that. Come through here with me. This painting has been covered throughout the whole party. No one knows what it is. Now, I've been obsessive about this. Not even our film crew know what this painting is. But you, Steve, are going to tell me what the painting is. You just won't know how you know. All right? Now, listen very carefully. All I'm going to tell you is that it's a painting of a celebrity, a famous person. It's, it's a caricature portrait that I painted myself. Now, listen very carefully. I'm not going to tell you if that person is dead or alive, not even whether they're male or female. All right? What I want you to do now is just to get a name in your head, to think of a name now. Okay, don't say what it is, but tell me if you've got one. Okay. Have you got one? Yeah. Sure? Sure. Okay. Now, for the record, all right, that free choice you just made in your head was a free choice you just made then, right? You weren't asked earlier on to pre-decide on a name or write anything down or make any decisions earlier on, true? True, definitely. All right. Nobody here could know the name you're thinking of right now. You might. How would I know? You're a mind reader. Absolutely. But there's really no way I could know, is there? Seriously. No. No, okay. And genuinely there isn't. There is no way I can tell you what you're thinking of right now because it doesn't work like that, all right? But what I can do is plant an idea in your mind and then I should be able to see when you pick up on the idea that I'm giving you. Okay. All right? You won't be aware of it consciously. Put your hands by your sides and just go with this, all right? The name you're thinking of now is not it. I want you to change your mind and think of another name. You got one? Yeah. All right. Keep your eyes open as you do this, otherwise I can't do it. That's not it either. Change your mind. Think of someone else. Look at me. Think of someone else. Yeah. Say it in your mind over and over again. Say the name. Say it to me in your mind. Change your mind again. That's not it. Got one? Yeah. That's it. Whatever you've got in your head, that's the one we're going to go with. All right? Yeah. Now tell me for the first it. time who it is you're thinking of, clearly. Orson Welles. You're thinking of Orson Welles. Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. Well, you take just a step forward. Take hold of that there. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I give you Orson Welles. Thank you very much indeed. I was thinking of Woody Allen, then suddenly I decided to confuse him, went for Orson Welles, and that's who it was. It was freaky. Unbelievable. All of us can be influenced through psychological techniques. For example, if I say, don't think of a black cat, what do you do? You think of a black cat, because the command, think of a black cat, was there in the sentence. Techniques like this can be used to influence people's thoughts, behavior, even their memory. Excuse me, sir. We're doing a documentary on uh, the underground. Can I ask you what stop you're getting off at? Warren Street. Pardon? Warren Street. Warren Street, excellent. Can I sit with you just for two yeah. seconds? All right. Yeah, the documentary is sort of about how easily trains of thought can become confused and you can have a piece of information that you know that you should know and suddenly it's just literally just gone from your mind like that. Sorry, what was the stop you were getting off at? Look at me, what was the stop you were getting off at? You said up there. What was it? trying to find it at the moment. Look, you got it. What is it? Warren Street. Warren Street. I don't know what he did. He just sort of got... Uh, and then I couldn't remember where I was supposed to be getting off at. Can I ask you what stop you're getting off at? Houston. Houston, excellent. You know when you have something on the tip of your tongue and you know that you should know what it is and it just goes. So now if you think about it, what stop thinking about it now? What stop? What are you going to get off that? What's stop thinking about it now? What was it? I can't remember. It's just, it's just gone. What is it? Leicester Square? I'm sorry. No. It's near Central. Yeah. Or King's Cross? 
No, I can see the sign. Yeah. Is that weird? Yeah. Oh, there it is. What is it? Houston. Houston. What was that like? Was that strange? Very strange. I've got very good memories. So I can't remember. It was on the tip of your tongue, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. One of the reasons I enjoy going to the opera is the spectacle of an audience enraptured. Their emotions are engaged, their passions brought to the fore, they become highly sensitive. I'm going to amplify that state and see if I can get someone to look into my mind. Excuse me, ladies, sorry to interrupt, but I'm Darren Brown, I'm here with a TV crew. I wondered if I could have five minutes of your time. Yeah. Alex, did you enjoy the opera? Very much. It's gorgeous. I want to try something with you to see how the opera has affected your sensitivity. We all have unique memories from childhood, images that just pop into our mind. And I have very vivid memories from my childhood, images that stay with me, that still feel real, that I carry around with me. And I want to try something with you as I step back into one of those memories. I want to see how much you can pick up. Okay? Okay. Now there's a program here, we're going to come back to this a little bit later. Until then, thank you very much for helping me out. Look, as your eyes close and you relax, just allow that sensitivity now to just open up. And with your eyes closed, I'm going to take one hand here and to lift your head up like that so I can look at you. And I'll take your other hand and place it on the program there. Now, as I step back now into this memory, we're going to begin with a feeling. There's a particular feeling, as I can picture myself now as a child. Just tell me, what's the feeling that you get? Happy. Happy. Excellent. I'm going to leave your hand there for a second. And tell me, do you see me indoors or am I outside? Outside. Outside where? Outside your family home. In the garden? Okay. Do you see any other people with me? No. Anything else with me? Yes. What do you see? Two dogs. Two dogs. What color are they? Black and yellow. Excellent. Now, um, roughly how old am I in this picture, do you think? Eight. Eight? Okay. Hmm. What else do you see around me? Flowers. Mm hmm. Bushes. Excellent. Now, what I'm going to do is ask you now just to slowly come back to me and open your eyes and refocus. And come back to me there. Perfect. And what I'd like you to do is to sort of pull back from that image. What do you sense? What was the day like? I think it might have been your birthday. Mm -hmm. I think it was a happy day here in the garden. Me so. and the two dogs. Yeah. Let me show you something under here. is a photograph of me on my 10th birthday. <laughs> is this what you were saying? Yes. Is this what you had in mind? Yes. It's my two dogs. This is Tammy. This is Lucy. Yes. <laughs> and this is my back garden. That's amazing. It is amazing, is isn't amazing. it? That is what you had in your yes. mind. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was extraordinary. I felt as if, without realising it, I was reading his feelings. So, I don't know, really. <laughs> Actually, what stop are you getting off at? Charing Cross. Charing Cross. What are you going to, going to do there? Anything interesting? Take the train. Take the train. Absolutely. Yeah, so this is... Can I just sit just for two seconds? It's a documentary about how easily these trains of thoughts can become confused. You can look at the signs that just kind of literally would go past too quickly to really spot what it says. And when you think about it, it's just gone far too quickly. And so if you really think about it now, what stop thinking about it now? What stop thinking about it when you're getting off at? What's the stop? Charing Cross. Charing Cross. Excellent. All right. <laughs> The stop you're getting off at was Archway. Archway, excellent. Okay. And you're sorry, you're visiting a friend there. Yeah, visiting a friend there. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. You got a good memory. Yeah, I got a good memory. Yeah. 
you look like you've got a good memory. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what stop thinking about it now? What stop thinking about it now? What stop are you getting off at? What was the stop? Do you remember why you're going there? To visit friends. Visit a friend. And where is it? What stop? Is that weird? That must be strange. Oh, that's spooky. Yeah. You, remember, you can remember your friend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember my friends. Can you picture his house? Where does he live? Look. Archway. Archway. That was very... Oh, this is, this is Archway now. You better go. Go. Ah. Um, <laughs> sorry. I missed that one. Will he, will he wait here if you catch a... Uh... I'm supposed to meet him at quarter to twelve and I'm late as it is. Oh. One of the techniques that I use to imitate psychic phenomena is photographic memory. I went to the British Library to show how this is done. Reinhardt, yes? That's right. Thank Excellent. you, Darren. How long have you worked as a librarian for? Over 20 years. 20 years. There are, I believe, 16 million books in this library. And uh, what's particularly impressive is that every word in all of those books is contained right here in this book. This is the Oxford English Dictionary. I want you to take this and have a flick through it and go to any word you like. You can go backwards, forwards, have a good flick through. Do tilt the book up so I can't see where you're looking. Any word you like, please. And look at it, settle on it. Do you have something? Yes. Just tell me the page number that you're on. 1016. Okay, and which column? Do keep the book tilted up. It's in the first column. The first column, and how many, how many entries down it's from the, the top? It's the fifth Where entry on the left-hand side. On the left-hand side, mm -hmm. so the first column. Mm -hmm. One moment, that word is the word... <laughs> it's knish, or nish, K-N-I-S-H, is that right? That's correct. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Good. Now, do you know how I did that? I cannot imagine how you did it unless you memorised the whole... Dictionary. Which is exactly what I've done. It goes knish and then um, knit bone. Then knit bone, that's yeah. correct. It's a technique called photo reading. And the idea, it's, it's amazing. You can just make a mental photograph of huge chunks of information, which you can then recall later. What I hope is interesting about this, as opposed to being a colossal and tragic waste of time, is the fact that it took me just under 20 minutes to do that, to learn that dictionary. What I want to do is try this with any book here you choose. You can have a good wander around, pluck out any book off these shelves, and then come back here with it. Test me, open it up, any page you like. You got a page? Um, I got a page, yes. Okay, what's the page number? 147. One 147. 147. This is John Laffin, 1974, London Dent, 179 pages. Uh, I'm reading from the top, can you follow it? John Laffin is a, is a prolific writer on war and military history. Is that's that correct. right? That's correct. Excellent. Try, try another page. Go somewhere else. And we'll go a bit further down this time. Just come to another page and put your finger somewhere on the page. You got somewhere? I'm looking at a page Go down now. a few lines. What, what's, what's the page number? 89. 89. How many lines down are you? Um, five lines down. I'm looking at the fifth line. Give me a moment. Um, White. No, revolution. Full stop. White uh, considers the philosophers to be the popularizers of the... And the is the end of the line. That's correct. Fantastic. One word was in French, it wasn't philosophers. It wasn't it was philosophers. Philosoph. It's philosoph, isn't it? It's in italics, isn't it? It's That's in italics. That word is in italics. That's correct. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Reinhard. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's fantastic. I'm overwhelmed. I wish I had 
the ability as a librarian, as a human being, I'm glad I can forget. The one inch punch is a martial arts technique of focusing your entire energy into the fist and then by punching from a very short distance you can knock your opponent flat. I found a Kung Fu grandmaster who can do it and invited him along to demonstrate it to a class of British students. Thank you. Thank you. Sifu Tam, an honour to meet okay, you. Nice to meet you. You too. You are considered in Hong Kong to be the most sophisticated master of yeah. Wong Chong Kung Fu. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Tell me, this one-inch punch, does it take a long time to learn? Is it difficult to learn? Yeah, it's taken me uh, one year. And you can put out a candle using this punch. Is this yes. true? I'd love to see this. Uh, That's outstanding. And you're going to try the same punch on Dennis here. You've volunteered to be hit. I will stand back. <laughs> what was that like? Quite painful. That was, uh, was very violent. Thank you very much. I yeah, want to show you something, something I do, which yeah. is similar, but it's non-physical. It's a little easier on the knuckles. Yeah. It just uses the mind. Could you choose a student for us to use here? Uh, this man. Guy on the end. What's your name? Archie. Archie, thank you for volunteering. <laughs> Come stand here. Can you feel this? Can you feel this? Stand, stand, stand. Look at me, breathe in. Out. Okay? It's just in your mind. Can we do this one more time? <laughs> oh, I can't. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Okay. This time I will stand behind you, so you won't be able to see me. So you won't know when I'm doing it. Would you hold that for me? Thank you. Yeah. You can feel that? You can feel that? Yes? yes. So this time I'm behind you so you can't see me. Oh! You all right? Stan, that's it, that's it. <laughs> Won't do any more, look at me, look at me. You all right? Yeah. It's just in your mind, you are okay now? Thank when you the punch much. landed, it just knocked me back. I couldn't see it, but I still felt it. And even though it was behind me, I didn't know what else to do. I just, I just felt that impact. It's quite shocking. Sundridge Hospital was built in the 1800s, and for over a century it was used as an asylum for the insane. It eventually became a psychiatric hospital, but closed its doors in 1998. You four girls grew up round here as children, is that right? Yeah. You ever been inside before? No. <laughs> See, the thing about hallucination and schizophrenia is that the patient just doesn't separate imaginary voices and ideas from real ones. But you see, we all have those imaginary voices and ideas from time to time, but we know not to pay much attention to them. But what I'm going to ask you to do for me is to pay attention to them. This is going to be quite disturbing. Then you will be completely will be completely It's just in your mind. 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 It's just I'll make you see things that aren't happening. Let me show you something. Now, we've all had that experience when you wake up and you think there's someone in your room. 
and you look at it and it's completely convincing but it's not and there's a voice in your mind saying there's someone in the room staring at me it just keeps on saying it and it goes around and around in your head watch the cup around and around in your head and you keep on believing it and what happens if two people experience the same thing at the same time two of you have the same voice and two of you hallucinate the same thing does that make it real if you both saw something now that wasn't real would it be real do you think yeah. you could both see something at the same time that wasn't real is that possible do you think it's possible Oh. What? What did you see? It just moved. What did you react to? What happened? It just moved. It just to moved. The right. Yeah. It moved to the. It moved to the right or yes. the left? Yes. Right. right. Moving to the right. Yep. What? I'm just moved. <laughs> Which way did it move? Left to or right? right? To the right. Yeah. How far to the right? Quite a lot. How um, far? A couple of inches. A couple of inches. Excellent. Keep watching it. Now is this real, or is it just the mood of the place getting to you? It's real. It's, oh, it's real. And it just going back again. Left. It's going back again. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh no. <laughs> what? Okay. Which way did it move then? Is it All moving right. to the left? Or is it it's moving to the right? Yeah. It's kind of in the middle again. Yes. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. The cup is moving. <laughs> You're definitely seeing that move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like a Ouija board it was, movement. We're going to watch it. It's going to be just sat there, isn't it? <laughs> it moved. God damn it. <laughs> Six thirty a.m. My techniques are concerned with reading signals from people, tiny unconscious clues that betray their thoughts. I tend to see it like a game, and I went to Borough Market to show some people how to play it. He guessed it virtually all the way around. I thought, and he just followed me trying to thought. Incredible. Martin, is that right? Good Martin. to meet you. And Andrew. Andrew, that's me. Brilliant. And I want to show you something with these vegetables. It will freak you both out. Excellent. I need a... Uh, can I grab some of these? It's all right. Yes. Some parsley, carrot. That's a squash, I tell you. And uh, what I can only describe as a cabbage. That's it. Four vegetables. All right, Martin. Here's what you do. Without giving it away by looking, think of one of those. You got one? Hold out your hand for me. Excellent. And uh, if you hold out your hand and take hold of his wrist there, like that. All right, Martin. You're thinking of one of these objects. You've got a vegetable in mind. Yep. Brilliant. All right. Whichever one of these you're thinking of, you mentally guide him to it. Just think of it, direct him mentally in your mind to the one. You move your hand backwards and forwards, and just pay attention to what you can feel slowly. Slowly. Pay attention to what you feel in the hand. See which one is thinking of. Take your time. Was that it? Fantastic. Isn't that bizarre? I don't know, it's just a feeling. But well, we got it, didn't we? So it must have been something, wasn't it? <laughs> it's a Victorian parlour game, and what's happening is that you're giving off tiny signals which you're able to pick up on, but you're barely aware of them. It just kind of feels right, isn't it? Yeah. And you can play this at home with people, and it's, it's, it's bizarre. Now, you can get very good at this. Uh, let me show you, we'll get a whole load more stuff. Potato, potato. Okay, same thing again. Well, I want you to have one of these vegetables on your mind. Think of one now. Have you got one in your mind? Don't give it away by looking at anything. Just have one in your mind. All right, give me a hand. All right. Now relax your arm. Give me control of your arm. You thinking of one of these? Give me control of your arm. Relax your arm. You got one in your mind? Yep. Yeah. What was that? The squash. Was that right? That was it. Excellent. That was impressive. Though. It was. Yeah. That was major league impressive. That. That's. Yeah. I thought it might take him a while, but, you know, obviously he's done it once or twice before. <laughs> then you will be completely safe. It's going to be quite disturbing. I'll make you see things that aren't I'll make you see things that aren't happening. I'll make you see things that aren't happening. Hold this in your left hand for me and pinch it there like that. You do the same for me there in your right hand. Sometimes an idea gets into the back of our mind and goes around and around and we mistake it for reality, it affects the way we perceive things. We've all heard that weird stuff happens with cutlery. Now watch and concentrate. Do you see anything happening? It's bending. How much is it bending? Quite a lot. It's still going. What do you see? I can't see anything. Tell me what you see. How much is it bending, Annabelle? About 30 degrees. 30 degrees? Yeah. 
You seeing it's it bending? bending? It's bending. It's bending. <laughs> how much? How much is it bending? How much is it bending? Talk me through it. How, how, how far is it it's bending? Getting fur it's bending even further now. Yes. Yeah. How far? What's the degrees we're talking? Thirty degrees? Same as yours? Yeah, yes. roughly. Yeah. About thirty degrees. Yeah, it's big. It's kind of <laughs> how far is it moving? It's kind of bending towards me. Yeah. Yeah. The top bit. The top bit's bending towards you. Yeah. Okay. How far? How far are we talking? A little. Slowly. Or yeah. Quickly? Millimeters. Mm-hmm. Yours? The only thing that I can see is the spokes bit are bending in half. The like... spokes are bending in half. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Now, you feel it, feel it building up speed as you watch it. I can feel it. Yeah, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Double the power, double it in your fingers. Red. Bending towards you, like it's just bending towards you. Just backing into a C shape, coming towards you. The tops and the bottoms just moving towards you. Oh. It's like rubber, oh. like warm rubber. <laughs> <laughs> it's freaky, but just keep watching it. Is this possible? Yeah. Is this real? Yeah, yeah. it's going. It's going. Are you quick. sure? It's Are you absolutely quick. sure yeah, it's moving? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You sure it's bending? Yeah, it's a V now. It's weird that we both saw it because, oh, sorry. <laughs> it would have been fine if just kind of I saw it and she didn't because then I would have thought it yeah. would have been, but, oh. It really so felt like it had energy. And it, no, <laughs> really it's in specs, it like isn't it? Yeah. If she was in specs, it would be like quite warm and tingly and then it would go really, really cold yeah. and I'd really have to concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> The circus is a place where great showmanship meets finely honed physical skill. These performers rely on huge amounts of stamina. I thought they'd be perfect for an experiment in controlling pain. Miss Behave, tell me what you do. I'm a female oddity and sword swallower. A female oddity? Yes. Show me something, show me what you do. Well, I have, have a pair of scissors, scissors here. So I'll show you this. <laughs> Jesus. That's a little something for you. That's genuinely really unpleasant. Let me show you something I used to do as a child. Okay, there. I trust you. Maybe. I'm really interested in the whole area of pain control. If you talk to torture victims, one of the things they'll tell you is that the only way they can survive the pain is to place their mind elsewhere. So while the physical aspect of the pain remains, its psychological impact is minimized. Okay, misbehave. I want you to hold your hand over my candle two or three inches above the flame. Over your For hand. as long as you can until it hurts. Three inches above until it until hurts. Until it hurts. It hurts, doesn't it? It hurts. <laughs> now you're all going to do this one at a time, all right? You're going to come up, hold your hand over the flame, two or three inches above the flame, for as long as you can until you have to hold your hand away, until you have to pull your hand away. Hold it there as long as you can. Okay. Yeah, you go first. Wait. Wait. I do not like being burnt, and that hurt, and it burnt. So I took my hand away. I saw smoke coming from under his hand, and I thought his skin was burning. It must be mind over matter. Now my hands okay? Before? Yes, pain, yeah. Definitely mind over matter. Now, let's try something more ambitious. 
do you have, either of you have a picture of your wife or kids or you got something on you? What have you got? It's my wife. This is your wife, I take yep. it. What's her name? Janet. Janet. What I want you to do is to hide this picture of Janet somewhere in this market. We'll all go out the way so we can't see where you're going. Excellent. Off you go. Martin, well done. So you've hidden a photograph of your wife somewhere in this market. Yep. No one knows where that is apart from you, correct? That's right. You haven't told me, you haven't told no, anybody else? No one. Good. All right. And we're going to do the same thing again, except this time it isn't just a few vegetables on a table. It is a photograph of your wife anywhere, anywhere in this fruit market. That's right. Okay. You've got to direct me in your mind where to go. You direct me in your mind where to go. You think left, you think right. Show me in your mind, direct me there. You're guiding me in your mind. Good. Now concentrate, concentrate on the picture of your wife. See the picture clearly in your mind. What's your wife's name? Janet. Janet, that's right. Just see, uh, see Janet in your mind. See the picture clearly. In fact, go back, go back in your mind. Concentrate on the, the most strongest emotional memory you have of her, probably the day you got married. Do you remember the day you got married? Yes. Do you remember looking into her eyes that day? Yeah. Good. Well, focus on that image for there and see that, visualize that in your mind and take me there. That's how clearly I want you to see it as you guide me there now in your mind. Keep thinking left or right. We're coming up now to a junction to be thinking left or right in your mind. Good. And see that image in your mind. See the wedding day in your mind. Feel like you've been married for about, what, 15 years? That's right. 15 years exactly? Well, very nearly. 16. Very nearly. 16 years. Think left or right. Where are we going? Think left, think right. Tell me where we're going. Think it in your mind. Think it in your mind. Think left, think right. Think forward, backwards. Where are we going? This way. Good. Good. See your wife clearly. So, 1980, what? 1985? Yeah, summer wedding. It's, uh, what is it? Saturday, June, July, June, I think. Is that right? Yep. June, 1985. See Janet in your mind, staring into your eyes the day you got married. Good. See it that clearly. Take me there. Take me there now. Can you remember where it was? Don't say where. Can you remember where you got married? Can you remember the place? Yep. Yep. Somewhere in the country, somewhere nice, somewhere, no, somewhere around London. Es uh, Essex, is that right? You got married in Essex, is that right? Yep. You got married in Essex, good. Good, and uh, keep going. Keep going around. Where are we going? Where are we going? Just think left or right. Take me there. Guide me there. Guide me in your mind. Where are we going now? Left, right, this way. Good, keep going, keep going. And uh, the guests, you can see all the guests. Just be there in my seat. The guests around you. See your wife. Look into your wife's eyes. Focus on that. See the guests around you, the guests at the wedding. Somebody come from a long way away. Any guests from a long way? Can you remember the person that came from the furthest way away? Yes. Yeah? Can you see that in your mind? Can you see his name? Can you see what he looks like? It's, uh, what's that? Tom, Tim, Terry. Terry, is that right? Terry came all the way from long way away. Uh, Lancashire, Lincolnshire. Lincolnshire, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Terry come all the way from Lincolnshire for your wedding. Oh. Good, concentrate, think left, right, where are we going now? This way, back, keep concentrating, concentrate, take me there, keep going, faster, faster, just do it, see it in your mind, get closer, get closer, and be there, the taste of champagne, the guests around you, your wife staring at your wife, your wife, that we're getting close now, we're getting very close, good, your wife that several years later you would take a photograph of, you would carry that photograph around in your wallet, well, we're very close, and then one day, where are we, one day, you would take that photograph out of your wallet, think, and you would put it, hide it, in a fruit market where, there! That's it. Where, where are we? What's this? There it is. There it is. Amazing. Janet. It's all coming back to you now, isn't Amazing. it? He was just pushing me exactly the right way. When I was thinking right, he was going right. And I thought immediately behind me, behind the window, and he put his hand straight to it. He guessed people that came down to our wedding like 15 years ago just by me thinking about it. No one would ever know that except for like close family. Very impressive. Do you believe in telepathy? Do you, Do you believe, believe in, telepathy? Tele in telepathy? The classic tests for mind reading were conducted in the 1930s at Duke University in the States. Five cards were used, each bearing a different symbol. Two participants sat opposite each other. One was asked to attempt to mentally transmit one of these symbols to the other. We are about to reproduce those classic tests. And you guys are here to help me out. Thank you for joining us. You're all psychology students, yes? Yes. And as part of that psychology course, you study extrasensory perception. Do any of you believe in telepathy? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Skeptical? Skeptical, yeah. Well, I'm going to try and transmit one of these shapes to you. 
So I want to see which out of you has the strongest ability for this, and that person I'd like to use in my experiment. So I'm going to think of one of these shapes. It could be a circle, a square, a star, a cross, or the wavy lines. Raise your hand, please, if you're thinking of my shape, the star. Yes, just yeah. you. Then it's going to be you. What's your name? <laughs> Sorry, Rowan. Rowan, come with me, please. Thank you. Once again, circle, square, star, cross, wavy lines. Now, we just had tremendous success with me transmitting a thought to you. Now it's your turn to transmit one to me. Think of one of these shapes. Do you have one in your mind? Yeah. Good. Focus on it. Concentrate. You take those. Those are yours. I have my own shapes here. Now, as best as you can, just send it to me in your mind. Just visualize the shapes. Send it to me in your mind. Look at me and just do that. Send it to me. Good. It was the, it was the star, yes? Was it the star? No. What was it? It's the circle. Oh my gosh. Again? Do it How again. did you do that? Think of another one. Think of another one. Have you got one? Yeah. You got one? Look at me. Don't change your mind. Just think it. Whatever it is, concentrate, I send am, it to I'm me. I am. I'm thinking. I know which good. one I want. Don't change your mind. Good, 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 good. We'll do a few in a row. Face down. The one you're thinking of, don't change your mind. All right? Oh, face up, turn over. That's my one there. Oh, yeah? shit. Oh. Again? Another one? Hold on, hold on. Have a look through if you want. Okay. You got one? Cool, yeah. Look at me, same thing. Very good. Okay, face down on the table, opposite mine. Mine goes down first there, so even if I catch a glimpse of yours, it doesn't matter, mine's already on the table. Think of another one, we'll do a few in a row. Look at me. Send it to me. Good. Face down, on top. Again. Oh, hold on. Go Have on. A look at you. You've got one? Don't change your mind. I won't. Do not change your mind. I'm not changing my mind. Say it to me in your mind, over and over I again. Know. Turn the volume up so you're yelling at me in your mind. Put it down, face down, quick, the one you're thinking of. Two left. Think of the one you've got. Stick with it. That one. Face down. You got the same one left. It's <laughs> cool. Pick up your others. Now, from the Sorry. top, face up. Deal them out from the top, uh, face up. From the top, yeah? Yep. So they come out in the same order. Oh my Excellent. god. You're freaking me, man. It's so weird. How did you do that? <laughs> Thank you, Rowan. Sorry. I'm shaking. Take my hand, you are. God. What did you do that? Thank you so much. Oh my god. It's the weirdest thing. How, how? Oh, how? He was reading my mind. Oh my god. I have no clue. I have no idea how he did that, honestly. I haven't got a clue how he did that. For me, the most enjoyable aspect of going out and performing is that I never know how susceptible people will be to my methods. Tonight I've been hired to entertain Lord Davenport and his dinner guests, a group of young barons, counts and countesses. Alex, if I said that I could just look you in the eye and genuinely tell you what your pin number is, how would you react? I'd be amazed. <laughs> do you want to do this? Yeah. Okay. Imagine for me you're going to the cash machine. You take your card and you put it in the machine. Yeah. Put your hand flat on the table for me so I can this see one? it. Just there. Yeah. Excellent. The card goes in the machine and it says, please tap in your four digit number. In your mind, just do that. In your mind, just press the buttons. You yeah. type in the first one. Try and keep your hand absolutely still, okay. please, all right? You don't need to move it. And the second? <laughs> the third? And the last digit? Okay. <laughs> Alex. Hmm. How would you feel if this was your pin number right here? <laughs> I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> you may wish to uh, change this tonight after the party. <laughs> what? Is right? It's right. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, wow. How'd you do that? That's, 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 that's freaky, man. That is. You're all the best, mate. Millwall Stadium, where the twin worlds of football and vomiting meet. 
I risked having beer poured over my head to play a game with the bustling connoisseurs of this fine sport. Excuse me, mate. What's your name? Tim. Tim. Are right, we going to play? You know the game Paper, Scissors, Stone? When you go yeah. one, two, three, and then you do something, all right? Well, we'll play a few rounds of that. I'm very good at this. Okay. All right. We'll do three rounds and I'll win, and then you can decide whether I'm going to win or lose or draw. All right? Ready? Okay, get ready. Go. We'll do, do it in your hand like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I win there my stone blunts your scissors, all right? We'll play again. We'll play again. Ready? Ready? One, two, three. Yep, my paper wraps your stone. Oh, come, mate. I win again. Third time. Third time, ready? One, two, three. And my scissors cut your paper. I win again. Do you want me to win, lose, or draw? Win. You want me to win? Okay, all right, ready? One, two, three. My stone. Oh, 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 you want me to lose one? All right, no problem. No problem at all. All right, go. One, two, three. Yep, your stone. Oh, oh, well done! <laughs> What were the uh, last three match results for uh, Millwall? 2-0, uh, 4-0 and 1-0. The three wins? Yeah. Alright, three wins. Okay. Go. I cut your paper. Again. I blunt your scissors. Last one. I wrap the sun. Right. Now you might think that I'm, you know, that I'm, I'm uh, seeing what he's coming up with and then coming in quarter of a second later. So I'll do it again, but I look the other way, so I won't be able to see what he's doing. All right. Win, lose, or draw. Uh, win. You want me to win for the last one, but I'm going to look the other way. All right. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> well done, mate. Cool, 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 what do you think of that, Gov? Sorry. What do you think of that? Amazing. He's brilliant. If he's got power to do that, I suppose it's a bit freaky, isn't it? Win, lose, or draw? Draw. draw. Me to draw. Okay, here we go, watch. I can't see him. Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done. It's all to do with the mind, isn't it? Quite amazing. Amazing. You've all played the game of word association. Yeah? Someone says a word and you say a word which you would instinctively connect with it. So if I said apples, you would say... Pears. Pears. We'll go all the way around the room, finishing with you, Jana. The last word. Would you, for me, just pluck a word out of the air and think of it. That will be your first word. Just say the word in your mind, over and... Yeah, OK, thank you. i to write something down for a little later. Hello, <laughs> Pete. Can I have that bottle, please? We'll play one round of this game. <coughs> Beginning with you. Alex, what was your word? Banana. Banana. Apple. Gold. Star. Bright. Black. Okay. Black. Black. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, until I've gone. Right. <laughs> I suppose we should check that now. <laughs> When you opened it up and it said black, I was, I was kind of like, that was the word I said. Reading people's minds. Can you imagine that? I invited two members of MBA, an advertising agency, to a secret location to propose an unusual task. Those who work in advertising are masters of persuasion. They subtly weave their images and slogans into our daily lives, knowing that we will register so much unconsciously. And then we walk into a supermarket and feel a sense of familiarity with a product we think we've never heard of. Millions of pounds a year are spent on it. It's brilliantly calculated, and we all fall for it. So I thought I'd turn the tables on the advertising experts. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Tony, yes? Yes, that's right. And Martin? Yeah. Hi, I'm Darren. Let me get down to explaining exactly what I want you to do. 
Imagine that I'm opening a chain of stores, selling a product, something I have a particular interest in. Your task is to come up with a poster advertising that store. And that poster must include the company name, whatever you decide that may be. It must include a strap line, some sort of slogan, and some kind of logo as well, some kind of visual image. Sure. Now the idea is you've only got half an hour to do this, so you've got to really work with your first instinct. So at the moment you've got no idea what you're going to do, correct? No. Yeah. Excellent. I'm also going to give you this. I've had a few design ideas of my own. Okay. I want to leave this untouched. We'll come back to that later. All right? Are there any questions? What's the product? What's the product? Very good question. Mm. Uh, a passion of mine since I was a toddler. It's a chain of taxidermy stores. Ooh. Let me uh, pop the pussycat on the envelope so it remains untouched. You have half an hour, gentlemen. Okay. Good luck. Great, thanks. Thank thanks. Let's go for it. Let's get it stuffed as a starlet. And then we'll hospital. Yeah, the ones who didn't make it. No, that's probably just stupid. Do wings? Our creature's great and small. Quality that says like nice, positive type of yeah. animals. Animal heaven. Where animals go. Animal heaven, that's good. Graveyard. Animal, animal heaven's good. Animal heaven. Where the best animals go to. Loads of clouds with animals on them. Yeah. Gates, Harps, pearly gates, gates, bear playing a harp. Yeah. Only the best Zoo. get in. Only the best get into air. Yeah, yeah. Where dead animals go animals. to live. Where the best. best. It's the best place for dead animals. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. Time up, gentlemen. Okay. I can't wait to see what you've done. Uh, come and show me. Okay. And Tony, before yeah. we do this, can you take the uh, envelope I gave you earlier? Okay. And can you please vouch for us here that no one's been anywhere near it. He's been under a dead cat. No one's touched it. That's, That's right. That's the truth. That's the truth. truth. Keep hold of it. Come around here. Now, before we have a look <clears> at it, just tell me what was it like. We started off. Thinking about the name, I thought that was the, we thought that was probably yeah, the best thing to the do. Starting point. Sure. And then take it from there. Really, we banged out a lot of ones that were probably completely stupid, and then got down to the ones that were slightly stupid, mm -hmm. and then we kind of that went back yeah. and forth for a bit, and then we kind of got something we liked and developed yeah. it. You can I have a look. Sure. Sure. Is this it? Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bear with a liar. So it's animal heaven, the best place for dead animals. And it's obviously, you, you'd see that it was stuffed. How did you come up with the name animal heaven? We had the idea of the pearly gates of heaven being a zoo gate. Zoo gates as the gates of heaven, that's yeah. interesting. I.e. Yeah. sort of all the animals that are dead are in a dead zoo, if you like, in heaven. And then we just kind of thought, well, it's kind of nice, but it's a bit twee. And we wanted to make it a bit funkier. And then we mm. thought a hard playing bear just answered the, <laughs> answered the brief. It's fantastic. I do want to show you my own ideas from beforehand. Okay. Um, I don't want to touch. Would you open them for me? Sure. And the winner is. I think you'll find this interesting. Okay. Put the envelope. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Well. All right. Not a million miles away. Let me put this up there. Hang on to that. It's. Yeah. It's a heart playing bear. Yeah. God. You've gone. For these angel wings here, were you thinking of angel wings or bird wings? Yeah, uh, well, uh, yeah. they were kind of a combination. You do them a lot better than me. This, uh, this was the same thing. I was thinking angel wings there. You've got animal heaven. I got creature heaven. Yeah. So you're, where the best you're a bit off there then. A bit off there. <laughs> oh, okay. Where the best dead animals go. Did you put blessed place with dead animals? Wow. Very similar. I had the idea of a zoo gate on there. It, it was hard to we leave out. Was, we didn't want to overload it. Was, it. it was hard to leave out, but sure. it, just wasn't, it was just a bit too much. Can I see your other... Um, the other one you were talking yeah, about. Put it right? um, yeah, put down. Yeah, it's just before there. Is yeah. it very different? Well, well, it's just just the gates. Yeah. Oh, gentlemen, please. I'm drawn quite similar. <laughs> Look at that. This, this was the image I was thinking. I've done it there in the background because this to me was the more striking image. And interestingly, you abandoned this for this one. This was yeah. obviously well, the first. In the first bear I drew looks exactly like that one, actually. It did, yeah. The first um, bear you drew. Yeah, just show there. you on the, on the nose. Show me, like that, show yeah. me. What have you got? Well, that, this is scary, really. But, um, Oh, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. You've got the cloud, you've got the blue. If you knew the amount of effort we've gone into making this work, you'd be mm. absolutely flabbergasted. But for now, it's comforting to know that you're just as susceptible to subliminal persuasion as the rest of us. Thank you very much for <laughs> helping you. us out. Tony, Thank you. Martin. It's a pleasure. Take care. Thank Thanks. you very much indeed. Bye -bye. I think I'm quite cynical. When I saw the bear and I saw a cloud, first of all, from, you know, behind the paper, I thought, hang on, he's close here. And then when, when we saw the rest of it, I, you know, 
couldn't believe it. I uh, immediately thought, oh, I'm gutted. I, <laughs> I could see that it was folded and I just saw the bear's foot hanging over the cloud with the harp. Yeah. And I just thought, oh, I can't believe it. Yeah. You know, uh, it was yeah, gutted. How embarrassing. But now, now I think, oh, fantastic, yeah. you know, I'm over the moon. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously we're pleased for him, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, he's... It's yeah, as long as it, you know, if he comes out of this looking good, then that's, you know, <laughs> that's always the main thing. <laughs> to see how we did it, watch their taxi journey again. Put a spell on you. Cause you're mine. Do, 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 do. You better stop the things you do. I ain't lying. You don't believe it? I don't know, I don't know. I was really believing it when it was happening and I don't know now whether it's just... Oh, I don't know. I haven't got a clue, honestly. As a librarian, I wish I had this ability. I would certainly ask for a raise. I don't think this guy's human, you know. He's from another planet, I reckon. <laughs> I have no idea! <laughs> I can't explain lots of things, but I don't really say it doesn't happen. If he can do that on just a station, just imagine what he could be like. Um, in a different situation. Anyone who does that, they're weird. <laughs> We're big fans. <laughs> oh, can we stop now? <laughs>